And for my students in electrical science, we do quite a lot of triangle work to find certain values. We have the impedance triangle, we have the power triangle, I can hear them groaning now as I speak. So, um, let's take the impedance triangle. Resistance, reactance, impedance. Quite often we work out resistance and then we'll work out reactance and or we'll be given resistance and we'll work out reactance and usually the question asks us to find the impedance and we have to do it by using the triangle and Pythagoras' theorem. So z squared equals r squared plus x squared or c squared equals a squared plus b squared going back to the basic abc system that we've been using. So to get z on its own we need to get rid of the squared so from what we've just been looking at we can move that across the equal sign and it will become a square root. It's just the same as square rooting both sides of the equation. z equals the square root of r squared plus x squared. Now what if we've got r and we've got z and we need to calculate x so we're going to need to transpose a formula so if we just go back to that one we want to get x on its own here it is well we know from our second rule of transposition if you like that we can just move that r squared across the equal sign and it will become a minus so z squared minus r squared will equal x squared Again, let's move the squared across, so the square root of z squared minus r squared equals x. We would want to turn that around and express the subject on the left, x equals the square root of z squared minus r squared. See how this is working. How would we find, let's say we wanted to find r on its own. So z squared equals r squared plus x squared z squared minus, take the x across, minus the x squared equals the r squared. r would equal the square root, let's move the square across, of z squared minus x squared. And it's the same principle for everything that we come across in electrical science where we've got triangles and trigonometry. I'm just going to finish off now for my lads who are studying for their exams with the power triangle. The power triangle we have kilowatts here which we call true power. We have KVA R, which is reactive power, and we have KVA here, which is apparent or total power. It's just the triangle. So when we see these in formulas and in uh, test questions, it can look quite complicated. And we've just got to remember the basic rules that KVA, so the hypotenuse value, squared is equal to the kilowatts squared plus the KVAR squared. The KVA on its own, let's get rid of the square root, uh, the squared sign rather, becomes the square root of kilowatts squared plus KVAR squared. Uh, again, a lot of the time we might just need to find this value or this value, so we will need to rearrange the formula. If we always start off with what we know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, if we were always to write that down before we start, we probably wouldn't ever go wrong. Because we can, fu we can work out either one of those values just by rearranging the initial formula. So for KVAR, Let's find that. Sometimes we have to find that value on its own when we know this and we know that. So KVA squared, all we have to do here is move the kilowatt sign across. 
it's a positive there so it's going to become a, a negative minus that kilowatt squared will equal kvar squared now it's just a simple matter of getting rid of the squared sign by crossing it over and making it a square root kva squared minus kilowatts squared equals kvar and you could do the same for the kilowatts there um, if you wanted to find that on its own you would minus the kvar off the kva and you would then get the value that you're looking for well i hope that makes transposition a little bit easier this uh, goes into a lot more detail if you're studying uh, quite high level maths but for my lads who are doing electrical science that's about as complicated as, it, as it's ever going to get i will just finish off very quickly for the lads that are looking at the star delta equation um, il equals ip and vl equals root 3 vp there's a formula a lot of the time you might have to find vp so let's use the same let's use the first rule of transposition we want to find vp on its own let's get rid of the root 3 by dividing by root 3 those root 3's root 3 divided by root 3 cancels out and you're left with VP equals VL divided by root 3 or it was just like sending it down on the little cross arrow so that uh, VL divided by root 3 equals VP quick one on the delta VL equals VP in delta so IL equals root 3 IP if you want to find IP on its own just cross it down or divide both sides by root 3 so that the root 3 will cancel out and there you go IP is IL divided by root 3 it's always a matter of reading the question what's the question asking for write down the formula always write the formula down in its basic form oops spot the deliberate mistake IL equals root 3 IP if you always write the formula down in its basic form and then transpose it to find the value that you want following the rules that we've looked at in these videos you shouldn't go far wrong thank you